Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Ace, and I'm back with another reaction video. Here we go. Alright, so before moving on to the next song on Madonna's 1986 album, True Blue, I have decided to react to this clip that someone sent me. It was an interview that uh, the Live to Tell collaborator, Pat Leonard, did, you know, basically talking about the song and, you know, everything that went on into, like, the making of it and whatnot. So let's go ahead and get into it and see what this is going to be about. That started with just with this, just... I'm going, oh, that's cool. You know, and thinking like that could be something, and of course it's it's we only recognize it as something because we've heard it before, you know, and it is kind of interesting, but it's just that's those are those moments, those kind of weird moments where you go, yeah, okay, well, we can I can do something with that. I was trying to get into scoring films at the time, and I asked Madonna if, as a favor, she'd write lyrics for the song, because they asked me to write an M title song too, and she said she would. So it was kind of like this is a coup. I'm, I'm, I'm going I'm to get this movie because she's going to help me, you know, do this. I had all of this. the whole song because it was my movie theme she was on her way to do me this favor of writing the lyrics and they called and said no and so when she got there because there were, you know no cell phones she got there and and I said sorry you had to drive all this way but you know they fired me and no it's not gonna happen and she said well let me wow, hear it okay. Sean's got this new movie that he's working on and, and this is this is this is a crazy story, and we, this might sound like you can't even use it because it doesn't sound true. <laughs> uh -oh. I had to go to work with Michael Jackson and Quincy writing songs for Michael's bad record. So I went to Michael's house, and I was at Michael's, and the phone rang, and they said Madonna's on the phone. And I picked it up, and, and it was actually Sean Penn, and he said, "Can you come to J the Jamie Foley's house right now?" Um, who's the director of Echoless Range? And I said, not right this minute. I can't. <laughs> you know what I mean? I Michael standing here, Quincy said, Yeah, yeah. No, no, I don't think not he was now. leaving anywhere. Um, uh, he wasn't going anywhere. But on when the I finished, planet. I went, I drove to his house, and she was there, and Sean was there, and, and Jamie Foley was there. And they said, We love the song, and we want to we want to use it for the movie. And Madonna said, Who's going to sing it? And we all went, You're going to sing it. She says, Oh, it's too low for me. It's too weird. She hmm. said, No, you're going to, you know, that, like, it was one of those things where, like, no, you should sing this. She didn't, didn't even consider that she was going to sing it. And, uh, and then Jamie looked at me and said, and Madonna said, you could score my movie. I said, I can. He says, you're hired. So I got fired, wrote that song, and got hired to do another movie the same day, all, all in one day, probably before dinner. And it was, like, mad, just mad. Yeah, okay. We worked on the song, um, and we ended up going back to the original 8-track and transferring it over to multi-track. I think her vocal, in fact, I know her vocal, was the one she sang that day at my house. She never sang it again. She tried to, but it was like, that was it. It was all this stuff that was just simple, focused emotions. such a weird song. I think I think it's just um, I don't know. I think it talked to it spoke to people in some other way and it really surprised people that you know here's Madonna and the, the last record this before Lift to Tell was like, was like a virgin. So like the last things they heard from her were Material Girl and Like a Virgin and then this. <laughs> and believe me that was one scared record company. <laughs> she said this is the first single. Wow. It's like oh my god. 
you know, they really said it's over. Like, there, it's over. You're doomed. You're putting out a seven-minute song that stops three times. That's just this weird, dark thing. They were certain it was over. The truth is never far All right, so this is pretty interesting. Mr. Leonard had the raw chords on hand, but not a complete song. Him wanting to get into the area of film scoring and asking Madonna to help him write the words to his piece of music, I think it pretty much tells me that uh, he sees himself as more of a, like a like a composer rather than a conventional record producer. I know that he's a main producer on a True Blue album, so I'm thinking that maybe Madonna kind of lured him into his into her realm and just kind of coaxed him into the area of pop music and that she felt that the keys were too low for her to sing is kind of curious. I mean, the lowest notes on Angel from the Virgin album pretty much match Live to Tell, even though this True Blue album seems to be like Madonna's fully realized lower register arrival. I think she had already kind of flirted with those keys already. So the whole story is essentially a tale of like, irony mixed with serendipity and a succinct example of how you never really know what may be coming next you know he's talking about how he went from being hired to fired and then hired again all within like the span of a couple of hours with Sean Penn and Madonna kind of thrown into the, the mix cycle with him that he nor Madonna really planned for this song to turn out the way that it did kind of makes it that much more organic you know it started out as one thing and then turned into something else you know in the end I think the universe just had other plans what was meant to be turned out remarkable and I'm sure it, this whole thing had to escalate both of their careers in ways that neither could have predicted whoever fired him must have kicked themselves afterwards because live to tell is a masterpiece it's also an example of how sometimes it's just better to go with your gut and inner instinct Madonna seemed to know what a masterwork this turned out to be and believed in it enough to know that it would push her forward in a way that a like a virgin part two probably wouldn't I'm only about halfway through the true blue album but already I can see that this is an important one for her and that live to tell is basically the crown jewel of it so yeah i want to thank whoever it was who sent me that link this is definitely a good uh this is a good factoid to know upon this expedition into madonna's work i love the live to tell song i think thus far it's my favorite of everything that i've heard from this particular era and i'm really i want to say anxious to move forward to the next song uh so yeah uh leave me some comments like and subscribe and until next time peace